Hello and welcome, it's Justin from DevShack Coding Academy. In this short lesson, we're gonna be exploring validation in an Express API using a package called Validate.js. So we're gonna get started straight away. I've got a very simple project scaffolded out here just with a package.json file and an index.js. The first thing that we wanna do is we wanna install some dependencies here. We can do an npm install express and i want to install nodebun as well just to get the hot reloading once those two packages are installed i just want to go ahead and adjust my npm start script to use nodebun and in that way next time i run the start script we'll have nodebun with our hot reloading that will be listening for any changes in our project as we go along in our index.js file we want to set up a simple express service so to do this we can say import express from express i'm going to go ahead and create a function here called start server that's just going to be an es6 function in here we will create a constant called app that'll just be an instance of express then in terms of setting up some middleware i want to make use of this express.json just to inform our api that we're going to be working with json in our requests and our responses and the very last thing here is just to set up a try cache block. All we want to do here is if anything happens while we try and start our server, we just want to throw an error. In the try block, we'll go ahead and we'll reference the app and we'll use the dot listen function. And that's going to take in a port that we want our API to listen on, as well as a callback. And in the callback for now, let's just say server listening on port 3000. Once we've written all that code, all we need to do is invoke the start server function with that change, you'll see that the server is now listening on port 3000. And once that's done, the next thing that I want to do is just set up a very simple endpoint in our API. We can just reference the express instance that we have set up here. So we'll say app.post. We're just going to use the post method here because we just want to catch a simple post request. And I'm going to set up a, a path that we want to catch us at. And we'll say forward slash user. And then we'll set up a parameter that we want to pass through. So it'll be colon ID. For the request handler, we'll just open up a error function there. And then we'll grab a hold of the request and the response. In your request handler, you can go ahead and grab a hold of this ID. We'll set up a constant called ID. And we'll assign that to the value of request params.id. And then once we have that to test out, let's just do a quick console log. And for now, let's just do a res dot status we're going to send back a 200 we'll send back some json and we'll just send back the id once we've done that we can go ahead and save our work we can head on over to a brand new terminal and we can set up a curl request here so we'll just do curl dash x we'll reference the http verb post and then we'll say http localhost 3000 we'll say forward slash user and then we'll just pass in an id and once we, we've got that, we can just go ahead and hit enter and you'll see that we get back a, a 200, okay? And the API is returning back 120. And we'll see in our console log there, we get the, the post ID of 120. And with that work that we've just implemented, we've got a very simple Express server scaffolded out and we're going to just move on to the demonstration with the validation right now. The whole idea with the validation is that any incoming request that we receive in our request handler, we want to make sure that if there's any data that we're relying on to do some sort of checks or data that we want to store in the database, we want to make sure that this data is in a format that we want it to be in and the incoming request doesn't contain anything dangerous or weird. In this case, do a, a validation or check on the ID that's coming in. And let's say in our API, our design, we want the ID to be of type string and must be at least six characters. So those are the two requirements for our validation. At the moment, whatever we're passing through, we're just getting back at 200. We, we're actually not doing any checks. We're gonna make use of an NPM library called validate.js. This will just allow us to implement validation in a very simple, clean way. We can just go ahead and kill our server there and we can just do an NPM install. And we'll say validate.js there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. Once that has run successfully, you can just go ahead and check your package.json and make sure that the validate.js package is in there. And if it's been successfully installed, we can go ahead and import it at the top of the, our file here. And now that we have it available in our file, we can go ahead and make use of it. The way the validate library works is it's got a couple of different methods that we can make use of. And the very simple one that we're going to make use of here is is a method here called single. This method allows you to pass in a single piece of data that you wanna actually run some validation against, as opposed to running validation on multiple different properties at the same time. So this function is going to take in two arguments. The first one will be the actual property or piece of data that you wanna test. So in our case, it's gonna be the ID that's coming in here. And the second argument that you pass in here is a set of constraints. 
and that's just going to be an object that we create. You can think of the, the constraint as a set of rules that we're going to declare. And this will be used by validate to enforce those rules on the piece of data that we're passing in in this first argument. In order to define the exact constraints that we want according to our requirements here, we can set this property up here and we, we want that type to be string. And the next one is we want to enforce a length. So we'll just say length. We'll open up an object there. We can then reference this property here called minimum and we'll just pass in the number six because that's how many characters we want that to be. That's just the code that we need to implement this validate.single function. This function is going to then return one of two values. If the validation passes, it's going to return a null value. And that means that nothing went wrong. It's just returning null because it hasn't found any errors. Otherwise, the second value that could be returned is an object or a string or an array of, of strings. And that means that it's found um, either one error or multiple problems with the piece of data that we've passed in. So we'll just set up a constant here. We'll say constant error. And that will be assigned the value of whatever gets returned from this validate.single function. So for now, before we do anything else, let's just go ahead and test this code that we've implemented. Simply do a console log and we're just going to go ahead and restart our API here. Let's go ahead and initiate another request. This time we'll leave it like we did the last time with a short ID here. So that'll be, and once we run that, the error that is being returned here is saying it's too short. The minimum is six characters. We can add another property to our constraints just to format the message in a better way. And that's just a string that we can set up for the message that we want. So we'll say ID must be at least six characters. So I can go ahead and save that. And if we initiate another post request, and you'll see we get our custom message that we just created here. It says ID must be at least six characters. So that's looking good. I'm going to remove that console log the way that uh, the validate single function working. We can then just implement a simple conditional check here. And if there is an error that we receive, so remember any type of falsy value that comes back from that single function means that it's passed. So in this case, we're checking for truthy value, which means that it has caught an error. If we do detect any errors, then we can just return early here and we'll return a response with a status of 400, we'll send back the error. Let's just do another bad request. You'll see we get a 400 bad request here. It contains the error that uh, validate.js has picked up. So we can just format our, our response a bit better here. We'll go ahead and hit another request. And this time you can see we get a JSON object with the error and it's got an array of strings for the values of any errors that have gone wrong. And that's it for this short little demonstration on how you can do some simple validation on your incoming API request in an Express API. Very short, quick example, but hopefully you've learned something. I've enjoyed going through all of this with you. I'll see you in another video. Cheers for now.